simple man, currently on a mission traveling through the golden era of the WWE Network. But in my travels through what is seemingly the lost island of content, a mysterious black mist appeared and I had to follow it. And it led me all the way to an archive called WWE NXT kids. No, this is not referring to Dusty's kids as in Dusty Rhodes NXT kids. No, this was a version of NXT for children. Which I mean, being completely honest, I find a little bit bizarre because why can't normal kids watch normal NXT? I mean, there's nothing wild or bizarre on there nowadays. <laughs> With all due respect, WWE created an episode of NXT Kids at Full Sail University in April 2015, with it being leaked a few months later on Vimeo. Which I mean, by the way, what a perfect place to leak something. No wonder nobody found it for months. Who the fuck is scrolling Vimeo? Settle in, viewer, this is NXT Kids. It featured Izzy, the Bailey super stan you may remember from back in the day, and various other WWE superstars. It was a show that was somewhat of a similar ilk to WWE's Saturday Morning Slam around this era, which in of itself deserves its own deep dive, like seriously. And I do very much want to go back to Saturday Morning Slam. I know some of you have suggested it, like that show had its own general manager and everything. We'll get to that. <laughs> you know what you do have? You have- <laughs> Passion. Passion. And for those of you with various other suggestions being like, where's this and where's that recently? Don't worry, there's a list. I'm getting to it. Just give me time. These videos take a lot of effort, okay? Believe me. And this version of NXT, which was called WWE NXT Kids, was still very much in the era where WWE was really pushing the WWE Network every single chance they got. Ball game. <laughs> what a contest. I feel like I just got my money's worth, Michael. As you would with the WWE Network. Absolutely, for $9.99. And in pushing it all the time, it was coupled with the fact that they were trying out a variety of different shows and styles on their network. Including the aforementioned Camp WWE, there was Ride Along, there was Table for Three, there was Swerved. <laughs> I can't believe they took my swerve video. Okay, a bit of a cheap plug, but the full swerve video can still be found on my Twitter. I'll leave a link in the description. Okay. This episode of NXT consisted of two matches from the April NXT taping, with the show clearly having a lot of effort put into it with graphics, adverts, and commentary from Corey Graves, Tucker, and Drew. Now, I know what you're thinking right now. Who in the blue hell are Tucker and Drew? Well, this is where the children come into the equation. He's a jerk. You think he's a jerk? I hate the haircut. Like, really, what is wrong with his hair? And I've got to go ahead and say, the idea of having children as commentators sounds hilarious in practice, but in execution, uh... And I really like to think about how Triple H approached Corey Graves about this concept. He was like, look, Corey Graves, we're looking to expand our programming here in the World Wrestling Federation. How does NXT Kids sound? Uh, yeah, I, I guess, Hunter, uh, uh, what is this, a documentary about Dusty's kids who have gone on to main roster? Well, uh, not exactly. See, you're gonna do commentary with a bunch of children. Ah, um... Why? The first match on this episode of NXT Kids sees young upstart Jessica McKay, later known as Billy McKay, taking on Bailey. Ooh, ah, I wanna know if you'll be my assassin to take out Dominic Mysterio. <laughs> I'm sorry, that's, that was too far. I just want his career to end. Alongside Tucker and Drew, and guys, are you ready for the Divas? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Right here, this is one of the newest divas in NXT. Her name is Jessie. She came all the way from Australia. And when it comes to Billy Kay, I've got to go ahead and speak my truth. One of the most underappreciated and underrated superstars of this generation. She is terrific. Big Billy Kay guy over here. I mean, she's talented. She's hilarious. She's Australian. I mean, what's not to love? Speaking of being Australian, as Billy is making her entrance, one of the kids on commentary starts talking about kangaroos, which really will become the common theme for this match. Oh my god, it's the kangaroo lady! You think they actually have kangaroo fights in Australia? I hope they have kangaroo fights in Australia, because I want to go. That would be fun. Corey, are you a hugger? I mean, in the right situation, sometimes I'm a hugger. If Bailey's giving out the hugs, of course I am. If, if, I, I, speak, if I, I speak, I am in, I am in, in big, big trouble. trouble. In, in big trouble. trouble. And, and I don't want to be in big trouble. trouble. But Bailey? Happy, happy, joy, joy. Oh, beautiful. Oh, the referee doesn't look very friendly. Yeah, <laughs> I agree with you. The referee looks like he'll beat you up if you do something wrong. Look at that face. He looks like an older Vin Diesel. Yeah, listen, kid. We'll see as this match progresses along just how much this referee is like Vin Diesel. If he stops the match midway through and he's like, Jessica, Bailey, there has to be another way. There has to be another way to do this because it's all about 
Family. Also, by the way, I don't family. know if this is a very niche family. reference that none of you will remember, but do you remember the family. WWE 2K14 story, Life as a Ref? That's what this is reminding me of, weirdly. Guys, you referred to Jesse as the kangaroo lady. Why exactly did you do that? Australia. She's, yeah, Australia. She probably, like, she probably practiced. wrestled kangaroos. Yeah, yeah. Maybe some koalas came out, and uh, th th that was her tag team partner. You're gonna notice real quick throughout this episode just how much they hammer home that Billy Kay is... Australian. She likes kangaroos. Haha, <laughs> get it? Bailey's the huggable type. Hmm. What, what, what do you mean by that? What do you mean by that? Huh? The kid then proceeds to say some more real shit. I just wanted a hug, lady. Is that so much to ask? <laughs> I know, I know. Which is followed by this line. So, Corey, who would you rather go out with? Jesse or Bailey? I mean, I gotta say, if... If it is indeed true that Jesse knows all these things about kangaroos, I'd be interested to go out and hear a kangaroo story or two. Yeah, I agree, I agree. I didn't even know what to say to that line when I was watching. I was like, what is this, a Sidemen Tinder video? And as I mentioned earlier, this match really is just all about how Australian Billy Kay is because they don't stop talking about right it. Right in the mechanical bull. Seems kind of fun. Well, yeah. she's Australian. Would it be a mechanical kangaroo? Oh, yeah. Mechanical kangaroo. No, Mechanical koala. Okay, okay, that's surely the last bit of- Oh, there you go, that's a little schoolyard oh. action for you. You guys have done that before, right? Now, what if Jessie got one of those from a um, wallaby? Who cares? She's, she's in school with her wallaby friends and she gets tripped. Okay, we get it. Kid then, out of nowhere, like a fucking RKO, hits Corey Graves with a complete stray, like one of those unforeseen right hooks in Wii Boxing. Bailey's a big fan of Rocco's Modern Life. Do you guys still watch that? He was a wallaby. Nah. Nah, I, I feel so that. old. You are old. That's a murder. <laughs> Bro, if a child ever comes up to you and says anything, just know it's 100% true. Like, if a kid ever walks up to you and is like, yo, you look clapped, which is British slang for you look like 2023 Tammy Sitch, sorry, I mean ugly, then it is probably true because they don't lie about that kind of thing. They're just honest to the bone. This episode then continues on to something that I actually find pretty fascinating and no, it's not that Big Cass is seven feet tall and you can't teach that. But it's the fact that this episode introduces, again, targeting the kid demographic a math problem, which is how many seven foot casses would it take to equal the 305 foot statue of Liberty? Uh, you know, if I had to take a wild guess in the dark, I'd go ahead and say about 43 and a half uh, big casses. Come on, cuz. I'm guessing. Also, I feel like if I was a kid in this NXT classroom, I'd feel pretty demoralized right now. I mean, I'm just a kid and you're already telling me that something such as being seven foot tall can't be tall? What the fuck is education? Why am I here? But listen, okay, it doesn't matter how tall you are, okay? You can be a tall guy, you can be a short king, you know? Shout out to all my short kings down there. Oh my gosh. But moving along with this pilot episode, they go ahead and then play an inspirational WWE promo, which ends with WWE for the hero in all of us. They're larger than life. Why we give back and we don't give up. WWE for the hero in all of us. Now, one thing I will go ahead and say is that WWE have always done those inspirational promos really well. And don't get me wrong, they literally had the devil himself running the company for years. But with that being said, I'll be damned if the bruv inside me wasn't feeling a little bit patriotic around December time. Oh shit, tribute to the troops is coming back on? Well, we will be there no matter- Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early- Oh, who cares, you're dead. J. Whitaker, and we are here with WWE superstar Zack Ryder. The Long Island Iced Z. This kid literally has the appearance of young Sheldon, but has the voice of old Sheldon. Where did the woo-woo-woo come from? Well, the woo-woo-woo was something I used to say to girls to get their attention. So when they walked by me, I'd say, woo-woo-woo, and uh, hopefully they turn around, and then I'd start talking to them. I'm really picturing now Zack Ryder outside a nightclub. It's like 3 a.m. He's had a couple of and Cokes, and he's like, woo-woo. No. We've got to go ahead and ask Chelsea Green the question, is this how he pulled you? Zach then talks about how it never actually works and fails to raise up the Bella Twins. Is it something I said? And once again, the Bella Twins making another, I said another cameo on the channel. What am I, a fucking Bella Stan account? Seriously, it's every video. It's either Nikki or Bree. Bree, can you literally believe that they made a literal version of NXT for literal children? I mean, that's fucking insane. I mean, John's house rules won't allow me to stream it, but still, I've heard it's pretty good. If you were stranded on an island and there was no way off...
What are three things that you would bring with you? I would definitely say some dumbbells, you know, so I can stay zacked. Cell phone, so I can stay on the internet. You know, I'm the internet champion. And definitely a hot chip. You know, why not? Right? Yo, I know that the editor of this fucking program was on horny hours. When this guy was in the office at like 2 a.m., he was editing this together. He was like, some Arabian, G. Uh, yeah. And if this was a little bit earlier in Zack Ryder's career, I would have gone ahead and said that Eve Torres was the perfect person to have on that island with him. But considering how that all ended, probably not a good idea. Anal bleeding. God, I wish that was me. Zach also goes ahead and says that he'd bring dumbbells and a phone to the island. Which, I mean, is pretty real, because when Summer Rae is being kind of annoying, you can at least load up a game of 8-ball pool or something, or maybe AEW Elite General Ma- I'm just kidding, we're not playing that dog. WCW. Well, what is the biggest thing in your career? When I won the WWE United States Championship, uh, it's been a dream of mine to be in the WWE my whole life. And then I finally won a championship. It was great. Genuinely, one of my favorite championship moments of all time. That was the first full year I was into all of this wrestling stuff. So 11-year-old me going into his first live event, I had a CM Punk sign. I had a Zack Ryder sign. And listen, back then in 2011, I was taking care and spiking my hair, okay? Even though I had Afro hair and I, I had a Mohican at the time, so I couldn't really spike it. But you get Comes the point. Come to think of it, Zack Ryder may be responsible for all of my horny tweets. He was like one of the first horny guys I saw. <laughs> Well, thank you, Zack Ryder, WWE Superstar. I'm PJ Whitaker. Back to you guys. Wow, thank you so much, young Sheldon. What's next? And now it's time for the NXT Fan Video of the Week. Hi, I'm Evan, and this is Beckett again. He's going to name some more themes, this time from recent and current superstars. Benny Corbin. This is legitimately oh. such a wholesome and impressive video. I love it. This kid really knows ball. He named the Ascension theme off the back of the initial drop. Hang on a second. Ooh, I don't know about that one. That was a little too fast for me. I think somebody's violating the wellness policy violation. Oh, that, that's right, Natalia from Total Divas. He should crash his car. That'll get him out of it. Hang on a second, kid. Whose theme was that? TK. Oh, that, that's what I thought. Okay, I don't know anyone by the name of Tyson, kid. I only know and represent TK. It's TK. I love how they have to specify that this is Sin Cara's single theme, just in case you were confused. Although, again, another absolute slapper of a theme, okay? Sin Cara's initial theme in that first year. I would literally see this man do a Super Mario jump into the ring and roll forward and think, wow, what a natural vertical leap this guy has. He sure is something. Dumbass. How much is a WWE network? 99. Good. The great parenting continues. Damn it, kid, you're like five years old and you're already selling out, okay? I hate sellouts. Even more than I hate the feeling of feeling like I have no one to speak to, which is why the sponsors of today's video are better. Oh no, I bought in. And as we're looking back on this episode, I'd be remiss not to ask what we're all thinking. If a kid could do this with current Deaf Rebel themes, then I'd be impressed. Because all of those goddamn Deaf Rebel themes sound the exact same, okay? They all have something in common. They're all 2K20. If you want to be our next fan Please send your submissions to video at nxtkids.com. Oh, oh, don't mind me. I'm just sending a clip of myself to NXT Kids. I really want to be on the next episode. It's not like I'm depressed or anything. Don't get me wrong. But it's just nice to see. The file is entitled My Reaction to Every New Lola Vice Media. And thank you. We asked you how many seven foot big casts it would take to equal the 305 foot Statue of Liberty. The answer is 43 and a half. Colin Cassidy. Oh wow, however did I know the answer to that question earlier? I guess I'm just really smart. Shut up. I've also got to go ahead and say, I really love the editing style of this show. Also, shout out to Lady Liberty, who not only is the women's champion, but crushed the entire women's division. I mean, is that Lady Liberty or is that Lady LaHogan? They then go ahead and cut to a Flintstones and WWE advert, which is actually something a lot of you have asked me to revisit. And I promise you, I'm getting to it. It's a part of a much bigger video. It's going to be one of my longest videos of all time. This episode then moves on to the main event and showcases a pretty fire Kalisto promo package with Sin Cara, which actually reminds me just how much I used to like both of them. Kalisto and Sin Cara have a habit of showing us things we haven't seen before. Two of the most dynamic, high-flying superstars we've ever seen. I think I talked about it recently, but I was never really a big fan of the Lucha House party or whatever with that annoying spinning thing. But as individuals in that faction, they were low-key toyed. Introducing first birthday, Agra Falls, Canada, weighing 225 pounds, Ty Dillinger. It's main event.
one time here on NXT Kids. <laughs> Why does Ty Dillinger's theme in this episode sound like one of those non copyrighted type rap beats? Oh, yeah. Drake is mid. When I pull up to his crib, he was looking real black and yellow. Watching NXT Kids. Oh, I'm seeing oh, it man. as a better rapper. But then he said it doesn't matter. I'm retiring with a platinum. A number one album. Okay, let me stop. Let me stop. You think he's a jerk? I hate the haircut. Like, really, what is wrong with his hair? Well, I spoke to Ty Dillinger earlier. He said that he wanted to give himself a new look, a new haircut that appealed to kids. Um, he did what? You didn't see a Kalisto entrance, which features one of those jumps I mentioned earlier that absolutely would have blown the mind of the NXT kid version of me. Half of the Lucha Dragons tag team and Woo! one of the most exciting superstars. The kids then spend a decent portion of this match roasting Ty Dillinger. And just heckle, which realistically isn't even that bad. Would you rather wear Kalisto's mask or get your hair cut like Ty Dillinger? Kalisto's mask. The mask. That, that hair is like a nightmare to me. Can you imagine one of the kids on commentary is like, Hey, yo, Corey, between you and me, this motherfucker's haircut sucks, okay? This is dog shit. Who faded this man up? That shit stinks. Oh, nice and nice move there by Kalisto. Wow. I mean, come on, guys. I've definitely seen worse haircuts in my lifetime. <laughs> okay. So with a chop of his own. Up, up, up. Oh. Got him, lady. Oh. Oh, he lost his footing. Oh. That's all right. He was but still able to pull it off. Lost his footing a little bit on the top rope. It was still effective. Yep, yep. Yeah. That's how good Kalisto is. Oh, that's something you'll feel in the morning. But I will say, watching this episode, it was really popping me just how honest the kids were being. It's like they haven't been molded by Vince McMahon's genericisms yet. So they can really just say whatever the fuck they want. They were just spouting off. They were, in the words of uh, 2000's WCW, they were shooting. Ugh. Fucking hate that promotion series. However, fun unknown fact, Tucker and Drew would eventually go on to grow up and be WWE commentators Tom Phillips and Mauro Ranello. Isn't that crazy? But then on this episode, the kids would go ahead and say a line that literally made me stand up. Oh! Right to the job. You're gonna need soup after that. Without even flinching, I said, soup's gonna be on his diet for the foreseeable future. I understood that reference. Michael Wesleyan to a drop. Ty Dillinger using some uh, illegal behavior there. Yeah. Referee didn't see it though. Are wedgies legal? <laughs> wedgies are legal as long as the referees don't see them. Uh, it was a mega wedgie drop. And with that line right there, we reached a new high in commentary. Why is he? Oh, it's because I said new high. Uh huh. Oh, human pinball! Oh, he's got this. He's got oh. this. Also, what a oh, kick! Oh. But he's good. He's got him. Oh! He's still fired up. The crowd chant What's Lucha. What's he gonna do next? We know what oh, comes God. next. Kalisto hits all his signatures and all his finishes, like literally all of them. What a win by Kalisto. More like Cry Dillinger. Kalisto sending Cry Dillinger back to the locker room with his bad haircut and his head hung low. And dunks on who the commentators are now calling Cry Dillinger for the win. Next time on NXT Kids, Dana Brooke takes on the flair of NXT Kids, Charlotte. PJ Whitaker sits down with NXT Divas Bailey and Becky Lynch. Sami Zayn goes one on one with Prince Pretty himself. All that and more on the next edition of NXT Kids. But unfortunately, folks, this show would never happen. This second episode would never be. This program would never be given the green light because it was indeed not ready to go. <laughs> go, go. Uh, oh, wait. <laughs>